Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar saying and we are talking about our X-ray tutorial series and on our channel these days. Uh, we were able to talk about the preconditions uh, in our previous tutorial. We understood how to work on that. Now it's time for us to pull out these tests into an execution and try running those test executions and understand how exactly the variations on the window happens when it comes to a test execution issue type. This issue type is just not generic like other issue types of Jira. We'll have a complete interface of test management given to you where you can look at the steps, look at the preconditions and many other factors and details related to a particular test execution. In fact, you can capture the actual result, evidences and any other defect which you raise when a test step fails. Now, to understand in more detail, we'll be jumping into the X-ray and trying to understand that how exactly X-ray caters us with the convenience of doing the test executions within Jira. So let's step into that and try understanding how to create a test execution and perform a quick execution as well. As a part of this tutorial, we will be trying to understand the test executions in the X-ray, which will be containing and talking about how to create a test execution issue type, how to call a test in the execution, and how to run a test within Jira using X-ray. In our earlier tutorials, we understood about creating the test, we created the preconditions. In fact, we tried understanding how to call the test by several methods as a part of our X-ray interface. Now this time we'll be trying to create a quick test execution issue type which is different uh, than other preconditions and tests and then we will be calling our test under that in order to run it and see the interface of executing a test in the x-ray. Now let's quickly go ahead and click on the create button here which will allow us to create a new issue type and this time we'll be selecting our next issue type which is test execution. So let's click on this button here and we'll be writing a quick summary for this. So say for example, uh, you can name it accordingly, like what tests you are doing. For example, you can write it as unit testing, you can write it as integration testing, or if you're writing a common test execution for all the sprint tests, then you can say test execution for sprint one, test executions for sprint two, or if this execution is going to contain all that test which you are going to run as regression, then you can name it as regression test suite as well. So right now I'm just going to make it as ad hoc test execution, uh, which is just going to run few tests uh, randomly and be an making any difference here right so I'll be just creating this test execution called as ad hoc test execution but I've just given you all the information that how to name your test execution appropriately now it's time for us to click on create button here and create a test execution altogether so as soon as uh, the test execution gets created let's go to this issue by clicking on the quick launch or you can even refresh the page and the uh, issue will be listed there and you can go from there as well so right now the issue is created uh, probably and I'm making it more professional you can uh, write a detailed description about it for example uh, running a test on login of the daily hand app right now that's just naming uh, the description that's it but if you want you can do some more things here and include the infer inter in inference and details about what the execution is going to consist of and I'll be pulling it up here stating that uh, it's assigned to myself so say for example testing in nutshell and I'll be pushing this into design phase right now so it's to do that means I'm yet to uh, associate the test related to this particular execution and trying to uh, import all that information what we really need in order to run a test. So all you have to do is uh, generally the test page should get loaded. I'm not sure it's taking a slightly long time. So let us just quickly uh, hit enter once again and see if that gets loaded faster. So sometimes it depends on your system configuration. Sometimes it depends on the internet availability and sometimes it's even the server which takes slightly longer so just don't wait and you can click on quickly uh, the refresh button to just make it happen once again so if in case that takes too longer uh, you can just give some time and this is how the page will be loaded and this will have only one tab 
unlike the previous options, right? So if you went to the test, you saw that there was buttons like test, test steps, you had test executions, you had test plan, etc. Now it's time uh, we are in the test execution and here it only has one option that what are the tests which you are going to run under this, right? So let me add a test because again you have options here that do you want to use existing test, do you want to create a new test or you want to call test from a particular test set. The test set is something which we are yet to cover so don't worry about that, we'll be talking in some other video tutorials. So let's click on existing test as we have already got the test with us and let's uh, associate that to this particular test execution. So you can make a select directly by dropping down if you remember the ID and there will be a short summary here. If you want you can search something more uh, by using your project and other filter criteria. If you want you can also make use of JQL to make a quick search. Keeping it simple right now, um, you can just select what you uh, want to go for. So right now I'm picking up MTP16, which is a tester to as a tester validate that a registered user can log in on Daily Hunt News app and click on Add Selected. So if you want, you can add more tests also at this point. There's no restriction that you can only add one test. It's just that it will create it as a test execution and you can have multiple instances of the same test or you can have multiple different tests under a single execution. And it will all show you the overall status bar here that how many tests are there in this execution and how many are uh, executed, how many are yet to do. So let me add a few more tests just for our reference that how the progress bar will change and the count will show and if we talk about executing some of them how the difference will be. So I'm adding MP15, MTP15, sorry I should have added more. Okay, no matter, we'll just repeat that once again. So adding the last uh, one more, that is M MTP17, and just adding that here. So now if you see the count has increased, and it's showing us that there are three uh, tests which are in to-do, and total tests are three, and these are the details of the test. Also you see the test type, you see the data set if you have passed any. Don't worry, data set is something different, which will be coming back to you with details. And this is basically to pass parameters and run a single test with multiple set of data. If in case the tests are executed already and you have got uh, defects raised in that, then the defect will be linked here and the count will be shown. The status will be displayed here and this is your execution button. So let's go ahead quickly. This is all what you need to do in order to run. So I'll just mark this test as in progress. That means now we are running it and uh, we will be just going off with the uh, running our very first test in the x-ray. So all you have to do is click on one of the tests. So of course I'll go in the sequential order. If you want to change the sequence, you can just drag and drop and say, no, this is what we'll be running first and then second and so on. So yes, all the protocols of test management are very well followed here. So let me just keep it on the top because I'm just gonna run one test right now and click on this run button. As soon as you click on the run button, it's going to take you to a complete different window, which is the X-ray executor. And this X-ray executor window will give you the significance of uh, interaction and the interface which you need for running a test. Now that's the window what you're looking at right now. If you see here right now, I got the summary on the top. I see the hierarchy that the test which you are running belongs to test execution MTP20 and belongs to this particular project. At the same time you see execute with exploratory app so you would need that app to be installed in order to run an exploratory test. If you have a data set you can see that here. If you want to import the execution results external sources you can do that. Even you can run the timer to capture how long did you take. If not the system will capture started on and finished on and show you what is the duration taken. But if you want to capture a time log, you can even do that as well. So here is the assignee, executed by will come once you complete the execution or run the execution. There will be version, re revision, and the test environments if you have created one, right? So right now my execution status is to do. Follow that. If you see, here is the list of all the findings which we have during the execution. So right now it is empty, but if you have anything to do, you can always make use of it, right? So I say if there are any defects, I can add it right from here. If I click on this button, I can create a defect and it will take me to the issue type as uh, bug, right? So I can just select the bug here and report a defect and the count will be added right here. 
okay evidences to support any of your executions any of your defects you can do that if you want to include a comment and this is all for the overall execution so say for example right at the beginning of execution you find that something is not working the application is failing you can report a defect right here no need to go to the steps because steps will be the execution failures right so before executing if you have any failures you can use this tab for that next is the test details and the test details are telling me a does the developer is associated to so it's testing this particular requirement and we have two preconditions which is to uh, install the uh, daily hand news app and make sure that you're registered so assume that if you have uh, fulfill these uh, you know criteria. okay if you have fulfilled these criteria, then proceed to step three if you have not then fulfill these criteria and then proceed to step three so all the steps are mentioned here like which requirement which precondition and which steps are supposed to be executed now so now if you see here my test cases have been imported and assuming that I have got the application with me I'll be just quickly running this test and keeping it as a happy path okay keeping it as a happy path I'll be running this particular test now say for example enter the username as specified username is here expected result is on so I click on the actual result and mention that yes the username is entered and displayed now in that case you just save it first and then here on the right you have three colors representing if the step passed step is in progress so by default your test will come in progress as soon as you update the first status so, okay so this is like currently being executed and red is failed so let me mark this as green and you would see some transformation on this window right now for example the overall status will change you will have this uh, uh, the gray bar which is to do turning into green so let's click on this right do you see that there's a background color green there's a two a bar on the left which says green and here it says you started executing and a timer has kicked off right a timer has kicked off and the pre time is going to be captured how long do I take similarly I'm gonna quickly run through and say the password also is entered entered as must okay and say so save now this time also the test has passed because expected and equals or actuals are same so I'll just tick this as pass as well right the, the overall status still remains executing and the timer is being captured and here if I just say uh, the last one that is to click on the login button and I would say here that the uh, actual home page is displayed actually you can make it more better you know following the protocols so I would say the users home page is displayed right that makes more sense so I'll click on save and I'll click on pass again but if in case you more you mark it as fail you have stepwise defects button so the difference between this top defect on the top right and the defect here is that that here when you click on a defect button and click on create defect it does not capture anything right the summary is blank description is blank etc everything is blank but if you click on a step that I have got a defect and you say create defect right you would see that actual description is actually capturing your steps saying that this is what the user tried doing by entering username so and so password so and so and the login button and this is what happened so this is the benefit of raising a defect right here from the x-ray not going after the execution and raising it see there is no harm in creating a defect after the execution but if you want to raise it right here then a lot of your efforts will be reduced so let me just mark this as pass and tada my execution time closed and I have got 2 minutes 13 seconds taken to run this the start time was 337 close time is 339 and executed as tab by me so now I've got this all detail I pretty much did not have the version if I modify anything I would see the version here I have not created environment yet so it's empty right so it pretty much gives you all that information what you really need to run a simple test don't worry 
this is something which will be going to come back again and again so we'll show you different scenarios different usage of options raising a defect etc uh, in our upcoming videos so keeping it short and simple this is what to talk about the test execution in the x-ray is all about so have a look on this try doing some executions and understand that so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.